Do you think the, pr the problem in all this is just greedy capitalists that are, that are causing, uh, that, that don't necessarily have to, it's not a free market? It's, it's not that they're just responding to input costs and therefore raising well, prices? The president, because... the president is expressing the frustration of the American people and of many of us. Uh, food, energy, these are global markets. They have geopolitical and geoeconomic dimensions. Russia's invasion of Ukraine uh, caused seizures in both the energy and food sides of the House here. And as you well know, the president doesn't have levers in the Oval Office that can control those things on a dime. Uh, what it does highlight is that we need an all of the above clean energy investment strategy, well, geothermal, fusion, small modular reactors. This needs to be a clarion call that that's the a, United States cannot be subject to Saudi Arabia and Iran and Venezuela. Congressman, that's an oxymoron, all the above clean energy. <laughs> clean energy, we spent trillions of dollars on renewables, and it's at 1 or 2 percent of global energy. So all of the above clean energy, just say all of the above energy. Are you, are you saying that only clean energy, or do you, should we do more uh, drilling? Should we continue to open leases? Should we reopen Anwar? Should we do the Keystone Pipeline? All the things that we've put a damper on, is that what all of the above means to you? We clearly need natural gas as a bridge technology, and nothing is stopping uh, right now, oil companies no, no. from uh, executing on the, on the permits that they have. But be, be, let's be very clear here. For as long as the United States is dependent on oil, it means that we have to make phone calls to Saudi Arabia and Iran and Venezuela when times get tight. We need to have energy dominance here at home, and we need to have a clean energy future that does not sacrifice our kids' welfare uh, just for right. lower gas prices. The best case scenario for not being dependent on oil in terms of years in your view, is what? Two years, five years, 10 years, 30 years, 50 years, what is it? We are sailing towards the North Star of clean energy independence, and there's gonna be uh, waves and wind along the way that we've gotta navigate. Well, uh, is it 10 we, years? It is clearly is it, a generational it, challenge. When do you think we can Let me get put it this oil? way. 10 Let years, me put it this years? way. I okay. do not want my kids dependent on oil from countries like Russia and Saudi Arabia. That well, we, challenge starts now. That's my generation's obligation. Well, then we definitely aren't doing what it takes in this country to, to keep us not dependent on foreign dictators. We're over hat in hand to Saudi Arabia and Venezuela, and we're not opening up the spigots here, uh, Congressman. We're heading towards, as I said, we are sailing towards the North Star of clean energy independence, but that requires investments in energy here at home. Let me give you one example. Uh, the eastern seaboard of the United States could be the offshore wind leader in the entire world. The president's got a plan for 30 gigawatts by 2030. There's an amendment snaking its way through Congress right now that would derail those plans. And we need both parties to come together with the White House and prevent that amendment from becoming law so that we can achieve offshore wind dominance here in the United States, create good jobs, create 30 gigawatts of clean energy on the eastern seaboard. In terms of, uh, uh, we'll switch gears a little bit, in terms of the Federal Reserve, what, what do you think they need to do right now? And, and do you think that we printed too much? Is that part of, what, of the inflation that we're seeing right now? And it is global. How much do you think it's too many dollars um, chasing too few goods after the pandemic, supply chain, whatever you want to call it. And, and maybe, you know, we needed to respond to the pandemic. Did we uh, respond too much to that? Is there, did, did we overdo it or some of it didn't find it to the right place so that we've created this problem ourselves? Well, when I questioned Chairman Powell when he came to the Financial Services Committee for our oversight hearings, what I pressed him on was not just his credibility in lowering expected inflation, but also in the Fed's credibility in preventing unexpected inflation. The only thing more painful than high inflation is high unexpected inflation. And he has been clear that he keeps the Fed's credibility as a price stability institution um, as his number one priority. Now, I'm not going to comment on individual Fed decisions. They're an autonomous body. But almost a year ago, I made clear that the era of easy money needed to come to an end. We've got to raise interest rates. It's not letting the president and Congress off the hook because energy, food, housing, these are not monetary phenomenon. These are real world phenomenon. And we're going to have to come to geoeconomic and domestic policy solutions to address them as well. But we need Republicans to come to the table and work with us. Uh, what I've heard from Republicans in the last six months is them tying themselves in knot over guns and abortion and Trump instead of reaching across the table and saying, yeah, how can we expand housing produ production and cut red tape? 
Uh, how can we work with you on expanding labor force participation and expanding legal immigration? How can we get uh, uh, some votes on the Republican side for Medicare negotiation of drug prices, which will lower out-of-pocket costs for senior citizens? We're going to do that in a party-line vote. Why aren't Republicans there with us? That lowers costs at the kitchen table.